I'm going to talk about the hindsight, a tracing system that targets edge cases in distributed systems. Hindsight is a joint work with my collaborator from Emory University and Mass Planck Institute for Software Systems. Distributed applications running in cloud and data centers are becoming increasingly complex. One example is the microservice, which is an architectural approach to build internet scale applications. The idea to break down the uh, monolithic system into small system components that runs on mining machines and storage nodes. Such a design could system make system building simpler because we mostly focus on developing simple service, single services and can relatively simply testing them and just put them together as a whole large scale system. In real world distrib distributed systems, such an architecture could be very complex, involving more than thousands of uh, distinct system components. A top-level user interaction then would be resulting in an execution across many of those system components. Although large-scale systems are designed in such a decoupled way, either as an application developer or system operators, you still need a global view of the end-to-end -end behaviors because they can be affected by any single components. This is especially hard when we want to troubleshoot a problem. Problem can arise in one part of the application, but the root cause might be elsewhere. For example, a faulty or slow component can influence others and bubble up to affect the application's end-to-end -end correctness or performance. We focus on one set of problem called edge cases. Edge case request represents rare and usually undesirable system behaviors that are all layers or anomalies. We are actually familiar with edge cases. For example, we might see there's a long tail latency or occasional errors. Our goal here is to introspect these few rare requests that exhibit the rare outlier symptoms to find out what's the actual root cause. And this is where we need end-to-end uh, -end traces. Here, a, a trace of a request is a detailed recording of its execution in every component where it's executed. At the application level, each component generates trace events, which includes timing, all the information, other attributes, and so on. An end-to-end -end trace of a request will take all the trace events from our machines and combine them together it would show where the request went and what it did. Let's zoom into one process and see how trace data is generated. When a request arrives at the process, it carries a trace ID serving as the unique identifier of the request. And when it's executed, the application will generate trace events at runtime. The trace detail, the trace ID will tell us which request the event belongs to. Traces can vary in detail, but even 10 years before, Google claimed their tracing system to support modern debug level logging. And also at Facebook, a home timeline trace would result in more than 10 megabytes of data. And that's all for one single request. There could be many concurrent requests executed on the same component, which can result in a large amount of trace data. There would be a, a backend thread, which eagerly serializes all the trace data and push them into the trace collector backends. If you trace every request, it will result in a lot of data. Collecting all those data would introduce too much overhead on application, network, or the tracing backend. So in practice, the tracing framework don't, request, don't trace every request, but only sample a few of them and generate the trace data only with the sampled request. One typical uh, sampling mechanism is called head sampling, which is when a request joins the system, it will make the sampling decision whether the request will generate trace data or not. In this way, the trace data amount can be reduced and such to achieve the trade-off. Such a sampling rate could be very low in practice. Open telemetry is the open source and the state-of-the-art tracing framework used today, and the default sample rate is 1%. But in a production system with a very large scale, such sampling rate could be as low as 1 over 100,000. An alternative sampling method is called tail sampling, which makes a sample decision after the trace collector backends, which means after a trace is collected, it will uh, make the sampling decision whether to persist the data. 
This way could ease the post-processing because there's less data amount to be processed, but still generating and collecting the trace data introduce too much overhead. Here is a fundamental problem when we want to look at edge cases. Firstly, edge cases are by definition rare. They are some infrequent requests. And when a request comes, we don't know if it will fall into an edge case before we actually see the symptoms. But to go back and, and examine the edge case, edge, uh, the problematic request, we need to look at the trace events before we see the symptoms. We argue that today's tracing system would fail on edge cases because the trace data availability from the edge case request would only rely on lock, which means you can only rely on that your request is already fall into the very low sample, sample, sample pool when you see the problem. We want to solve the problem and we start with a few observations. Firstly, if we examine where the tracing system, where the tracing overhead comes from, actually the data generation is pretty cheap. Say of the art works has shown that each, each application can generate up to a few hundreds of megabytes data with a reasonable overhead. So what's expensive here is actually not the data generation, but when we want to collect all the, all the trace data and centralize them to the backend. Second is we want to look at the edge case, and, they are, and the edge case trace data is only a small set among all the trace data, because edge case requests are by definition rare. And also, many, problem, many uh, symptoms can be programmatically detected relatively quickly. For example, if a request returns an error or has a usually high latency, we can usually detect these symptoms cheaply and locally at some point during the request or shortly after it completes. So our ultimate goal is to capture the exact trace data we want for the edge cases. And with that, we propose retroactive sampling. Here's a, key, a few key points of that. Firstly, because we need to track all the data, uh, because we want to track the edge cases before we see the symptoms, so we have to trace every request and generate trace data. But instead of ingest them, to ingest them eagerly, we leave all the trace data into the memory. Then at some point, you can imagine the trace data of the same request would be scattered across different machines. Once we detect the symptom, we want to be able to preserve a trace of the symptomatic request to notify that here's a problematic request and we want the trace data. We call this signal a trigger. An application can fire a trigger at any time once a problem is detected on any component. This means that if we do get a trigger for a trace, we have to notify the relevant machines to report the trace data. For this, we need to know where the data actually exists. Retroactive sampling also has an abstraction called breadcrumbs for doing this distributed notification. Breadcrumbs are forward and backward references of nodes that the request has visited. Since we only want to track edge cases, many, many requests would result in normal case, and we actually don't need the trace data. So if a request is finally not triggered, the data will just be overwritten. This implies the challenge of implementing retroactive sampling, that all the steps we talk about above has to be very fast. Because once we see a problem, we want to race with the time to collect all the trace data before they spare. With that, we built Hindsight, a lightweight always-on tracing system that implements retroactive sampling. Hindsight is able to trace 100% of requests with much lower overhead on the application than today's tracing framework. Hindsight handles large-scale data volume, which benefits from the system design to split the control and data plane. Also, Hindsight implemented an auto-trigger library to support the system detection, and also a scalable breadcrumb mechanisms for triggered traces. In this talk, we will focus on the first two about the overhead, and I encourage you to check our paper for details. So let's look at Hindsight's control and data plane. Here, Hindsight will pre-allocate a buffer pool in the shared memory on each system component, and all, all the buffers are fixed sized with a few kilobytes and identified as their offset in the shared memory. So only with a buffer ID, the client will know where to write the data directly into the memory. A trace 
will be represented then as an append-only sequence of these buffers, and each containing the route trace data. And uh, to know that no two requests will share a buffer, so we don't need for the buffer management for that. A separate agent process will run along the application, and the agent doesn't touch the trace data, but only index the mail data, which is to maintain which request use the which buffers. It means even a request that generates a lot of data, it can be concisely represented by the IDs of the buffers. So the client only needs to keep writing data to the buffers once it's know the, uh, once it's know the address in the memory space. And client agent will communicate with asynchronous metadata queues. On the, from the client side, once a request finishes generating trace data to a buffer, it will just push the trace ID and together with the buffer ID to the queue, notifying that I'm done with writing the buffer. And when it wants to start writing some trace data, it will just acquire a free buffer, which is maintained by the agent. On the agent side, it will maintain all the buffers like an LRU cache. Once it, uh, once it acquires a buffer, which is finished by, uh, when it's uh, already written by client, it will just insert that into, it will just enter that, insert that into the pool. And it needs to make sure that there are always available buffers to not block the client side to write trace data. Here, agent needs to maintain the trace data coherence because a request may visit a system component many times and the trace data might be scattered. If we always just simply dropped all this buffer, we, would result, we might result in getting an incomplete, uh, incomplete trace of the request, which we don't want. So every time agent needs to evict something, it will evict the oldest request with its all buffers and just make them available. In such a way, the agent is pretty lightweight and is efficient enough to handle up to 15 gigabytes data that the client generated. The agent also runs the rate limiting to make sure that it doesn't overcome too much, uh, too much resource. We evaluate hindsight on a few benchmarks we tested on Deathstar Bench on HDFS. And also to test the scalability, we also develop a configurable RPC framework, which we call Microbricks. Microbricks is constructed with 93 service applications, which is based on the open source the Alibaba uh, Microsoft Trace data site. And we run that on a, private uh, on a private cluster. Our baseline is the open telemetry, and we configure that with Jaeger tracing system. We compare retroactive sampling with head and tail sampling mechanisms, and also with a no tracing case to test how much overhead do we add. In this talk, I'll still most, uh, mostly focus on the overhead, and you can check, the de check our paper for details of the other evaluations. So we first see if hindsight can generate and manage large amount of data. The graph shows a latency throughput curve for a gRPC service and the load. And here we only compare with tail sampling because head sampling doesn't support to trace 100% of requests. We can see the green line as the Jaeger, which has a high, overlie, a high overhead, reduced the throughput, reduced the peak throughput by nearly 50% and imposed between 10 and 100 times increase in latency. And turns out dropping a lot of uh, dropping a lot of a lot of data due to its overhead. Hindsight as a comparison is very close to no tracing baseline. We achieve this because the generating trace data in memory is just not the expensive part of the tracing system. Such fast generation also benefits from hindsight's nanosecond level tracing APIs. For example, a typical trace data generation API called TracePoint would only take about nano, eight nanoseconds for, for a general configuration. Also, we test hindsight with other sampling mechanisms to check the performance and the ability to capture edge cases. Here, we run hindsight on the micro bricks at scale, and we want to test it at scale. And we randomly decide 1% edge case requests. With such a scale, tracing system would introduce some overheads but hindsight would only introduce 3.5, less than 3.5% peak throughput reduction than the, no tracing, uh, than the no tracing case. This is similar with the head sampling, and we can see that the tail sampling results in uh, much higher reduction on the throughput. 
Hindsight can capture almost all the cache ca uh, all the edge cases with a low tracing bandwidth. Again, similar with head sampling and uh, way better than the tail sampling. But here to know that hindsight is capturing 100% request, but with head, head sampling, you only have the 1% uh, uh, sample rate. So as a conclusion, we argue that this tracing system would rely on lock to track edge cases. And we propose retroactive sampling, which can trace every request and can, click, and can quickly collect all of them in time. With that, we build hindsight, a lightweight and always on tracing system, which is actually a departure of today's tracing framework that if you want to track all the details. We open source of hindsight and together with the microbricks for the tracing community to test their tracing frameworks at scale. By this, I want to thank you for coming to the talk and I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>